Hey everyone, this is William with Robot Box, and today I'm going to be comparing my uh, DSO Nano with a nice digital phosphorus oscilloscope from Tektronix. And down here I have an Agilent uh, arbitrary function generator driving the signal through a T joint into both the two oscilloscopes. So let me turn off the lights so we can see things better. Okay, so here we go with the lights off. Maybe we can uh, actually see the screen a little bit better. So the DSO Nano here is a one mega sample per second handheld digital oscilloscope. So being that it's one mega sample per second, that means we can't look at extremely fast signals. So I was going to show you uh, some aliasing going on here. So right now on my Agilent, I am generating a one kilohertz signal. So uh, we can increase that frequency. And over here on my DSO, we're looking at two milliseconds per division. So I want to go ahead and change that. You can use the up and down arrows to increase or decrease the time scale. So this is our minimum time scale, one microsecond per division. And as I increase my frequency, I'm at 10 kilohertz now, 20 kilohertz, maybe 50, 100. We're now at 200 kilohertz, and you can start to see individual samples in this display. Uh, let me see if I can get a good shot of this. Might be a little bit difficult to see, but you can really see individual samples. In fact, if I pause this by hitting the RS button, you can see how triangular it looks, because really what we're looking at is for each division, we're only looking at one sample, because we're in the one microsecond. Uh, per division, and it's a one mega sample per second scope. So just run this again. So at 200 kilohertz, a sine wave still looks kind of like a sine wave, but as we increase the rate, um, you're really having a hard time seeing an increase because we're hitting the aliasing rate here a little bit better. For me. So I increase the scale on this guy. We can see still got a pretty good signal and this is in the same time scale as the DSO now. So we can see the two signals here and again if I increase the DSO Nano just uh, well because of aliasing you're not really seeing much of any change Again, we're up at around 400 kilohertz now. And rolling it back down to 200. And at this point, we can start to see real changes happening. So let me change the time scale just a little bit. This is 10 microseconds per division. Go ahead and change this one also. And we're looking at a 125 kilohertz sine wave. We roll that up to 200. Uh, you can see it's not looking so good. Been lots of aliasing. Got some beats in there. This is around 300. And again, around 100 to 200, we can start to see a real nice signal. So, the first thing to know is if you're going to be looking at signals greater than about 100 or 200 kilohertz, you might want to choose a different option. Okay, let me look at a square wave here. Again, this is a 163 kilohertz square wave. And we're looking at it on our Tektronix scope. Looks not too bad. Uh, we are getting some noise in there. That's probably because of this BNC coupler and the DSO Nano being in line. And then over here, let me change my time scale. I'm decreasing it and you know at this point we got a pretty decent square wave this is at 80 kilohertz also with the DSO Nano you can increase the offset um, one thing to note is the DSO Nano doesn't have AC coupling and that could be a problem if you're ever looking at signals with a big DC offset it's going to be hard to fit it on the screen I'm actually not sure what the limits are on this um, uh, 
Y position adjustment is going to be affected by the ADC on this chip. And also if we look at the frequency output, let's see if that's correct. We flip back into 20 microseconds per division and the DC voltage looks pretty good, around 1 volt. The duty cycle is having a hard time computing that actually. So if we increase the voltage per division, it might compute it a little bit better. And again, we'll have to use the Y adjust to bring it back onto the screen. So 51% duty cycle. It's pretty close to what the Agilent is putting out, which is a 50% duty cycle. back over here and then let me show you frequency. So it's showing a frequency of 77.8 kilohertz and our Agilent is doing 78. So really close on estimating the frequency of the signal, which is pretty good. Great for checking, you know, signals every day. Also, here's a ramp signal. Let me increase this frequency a bit. and lower my time scale. So this is 5 microseconds per division. This is 150 kilohertz ramp. You know, we can still make it out as a ramp. Doesn't look quite as good as on our Tektronix, obviously. And then as I increase this up to, here's 200 kilohertz. And further. At this point, it's looking pretty funky. This is 250. So those are a few examples of looking at various signals on the DSO Nano. Uh, our takeaway message here is that if you're looking at anything above mm, maybe 100 or 200 kilohertz, you probably want a better option. But for that, uh, it's a really good device, especially for 100 bucks.